Warning, in this video we are working with acetone, which while it is non-toxic has known to be very stinky, so crack a window while you watch this video. Hey everybody, just a quick note from the editing desk, aka my living room. Um, the end of this video somehow gets lost. Something happened in the in the recording process, and part of that recording, I feel, should have been put at the beginning, so I'm taking advantage to do that now. Acetone is more than just stinky, it's also flammable, which means you need to keep it away from your 3D printer with its hot end and electronics that could generate a spark. Do not use it near your 3D printer while it's running, and do not store it near your 3D printer. It does have that potential uh, for danger. Okay. That's all I needed to say. I will see you again at the end of the video. So welcome to my workbench where we're going to be doing this today. I'm talking about a process that I've used in the past for making prints uh, that are a little bit more visible. See, with FFF 3D printing, a lot of the times we only have one color to work with. That one color we can enhance by having raised or relief portions that we have patterns in. And a lot of times that works okay in real life. But on the camera, I need to make these things stand out a little bit. And so I use a, a process that I'm going to show you here. I used it here to make the uh, seals of Rassilon stand out a little bit on these. Uh, I did not use that on this one, however. On this one, I changed filament colors as I went up. So that's one option is to change filament colors. But I'm talking about just printing with one color and then a post-processing process. It also works on three-dimensional objects. I did it on my... Uh, space dice here, the gear space dice that I made. And before this being solid pink, it didn't really show up on camera and you couldn't see the gears. I don't think that it expressed it very well, but now you can see, oh, it's got that cool gear pattern. So what you're going to need for this process, well, you're going to need some acetone. Oh, uh, I also used it on a couple of a couple of the supporter tiles, and I'll probably use it on some more of them. For instance, you'll notice the red just doesn't show up at all. So I'll probably hit those uh, a little bit after here. And I've got a supporter tile that I'm working on today for this. So what you need is a 3D print with a lowered portion, relief, that you can uh, fill in, and some, some nail polish. These are, uh, these are just cheap dollar store nail polish that I got. And I purchased these with Patreon uh, money. So thank you guys very much. I know it seems silly to do a little, uh, just a dollar store thing with Patreon money, but quite frankly, I'm I'm just in a situation where I need every penny. Also, you're gonna need some acetone. Uh, so to begin with, all you have to do is pick a color that you wanna put in here. And I think, uh, I think Jerry Johnson here is gonna be joining on Team Teal. So we're gonna put this here. Now this is a, a transparent PLA uh, you know again uh, like my last video said it's not technically transparent but it's enough to make it so it's hard to see the name and then you you take your nail polish and you just paint it on there and jam it in there really destroy those bristles I mean you're not gonna be using this for your nails I hope uh, just jam it in there and get that that nail polish as deep in there as you can be, be liberal with it go crazy with it okay so there we go. And then once you're done getting it into all the nooks and crannies that you want it in there, uh, you're going to set this aside to dry. Uh, I might have a little bit too much in some of these, so I'll just try and smooth that out uh, and put too much in the other ones. I guess that's the plan. <laughs> Here we go. All right, I think I'm going to call that one done. And there's nothing more I can do with this for now, so I'll put it aside. I'm also going to uh, work on this Pick of Destiny print that I have here. Uh, and I put some plastic down because this is not the first uh, 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 <laughs> I'm blanking on here. This is not the first table that I have ruined with acetone. So I put some plastic down to make sure that that won't happen. Um, fortunately, nail polish you don't have to wear gloves with because it's designed to go on skin, so it's good. Um, acetone is also, like I said, non-toxic, even though it smells a little bit nasty, but you know, so does this stuff. Uh, so there's the Pick of Destiny all just covered with the goop. And I'm not going to let the Pick of Destiny dry. It's going to be a part of this next step. Uh, do I want to do the... I'll, I will do this dice 
uh, later. Uh, the hard part about this dice is once it's all done, you have to set it down, and so you can't set it down on any surface that you've painted. Fortunately, this dice, if you are clever, will stand on its edge. Uh, it was easier with the space dice because they're magnetic, so I could hang them. I may have to just wait to paint the bottom side until later, so I'll do that one later. Meanwhile, I've got a couple of prints that I've done already, and these are all dry. So the next thing you want to do is take a little soft cloth or paper towel and uh, get some acetone on here. My favorite method of getting acetone out of these really big uh, jugs is to use a straw and just kind of wick it out there and pour it on there. And if I need more, I'll get more. Uh, you should never leave your acetone open like that because it will evaporate, but we're just going to be a second. This is a very fast process. So here we go. Uh, normally I do it upside down, but I'll do it like this. This time I may have let this dry a little bit too. Nah, it's perfect. It's looking great. And now you can see the name. So this is Blaine Sprague's uh, uh, supporter tile, and it stands out really good, and it's completely visible as opposed to the way it was before, which was largely uh, difficult to read. I think we need some more acetone on here, so we're going to just douse that just a little bit, and let's see if I can finish cleaning this off. Do not use the non-acetone nail polish remover because that stuff fails at the purpose for which it was created. It does not remove spit like this. Acetone, pure acetone, is the magic that makes this work. Now on these prints here, I actually did them in ABS, which means that the acetone was actually smoothing them, which created a bend in them because one side is smoothed and the other side was not, and I didn't know that at the time. But these prints are made out of PLA, so the PLA doesn't react to the acetone at all, but the nail polish does. So that's part of, that's part of this process is choose choose your materials wisely. Uh, I think we're done here. That one looks really good. Let's uh, let's do some work. Uh, you know what? I think I'm going to hit the pick of destiny, and I want to hit this while it's still wet because this pick of destiny has lots of of layers to it, and I want to I want some of those layers to stay nice and, and uh, covered up and uh, this this one has more depth than just two layers and so I want to hit it while it's wet and give it a good chance to be just absolutely uh, it, it's giving it kind of an antiqued feel it's kind of washing it out even of the eyes though so that might be a downside but you know what overall I think that looks really good I might hit it again and try it again uh, I don't know. We'll see. I kind of like that. Uh, at the same time, I kind of want the eyes to to work a bit better than that, so I may hit them again. Uh, we'll see. Oh, and in my in my last video, I was doing these dice, uh, and I've got one of them here that I've kind of sanded down, and I use I use this stuff to fill in the pips uh, of the dice, and I do that just by. Um, just dropping a little bit in into the pips. Now the downside to this is you got to make sure that you're not catching air bubbles underneath there and also that you got to set it down when it's done. Fortunately this particular dice, because it is the skull dice, uh, has one side of it that doesn't have any objects so that you can see any pips on it. That's the one side so that you can see the skull inside of it. So that's that gives me a nice place to set it down. Um, I'll finish that later. Meanwhile, let's see how we can make this work. So notice I've, I've painted over this. Uh, let's, let's get to a semi-clean side of this. And where's my straw? Where'd my straw go? Did I drop my straw? I seem to have misplaced my straw. Well, there we go. That's good. I've misplaced my straw. I think I got enough on here to finish this. There we go, yeah, just rub it off of the top surfaces there. And the result is that the the relief portions uh, really, really stand out. I think I'm destroying it a little bit, the paper towel a little bit, because I don't have enough acetone on here. Uh, I'll find my straw later. Since I lost my straw, I guess that's the end of this process. So there we go, that's how I, that's how I take prints from just being a single color to being multicolor. Uh, just using a little bit of acetone and you can also do this with ABS slurry if you happen to have that which I also keep in a nail polish bottle somewhere around here 
um, and you just paint it in and rub it off. Again, it works on ABS prints, but it works better on PLA prints because PLA doesn't react to the acetone. <laughs> I think I found how, how I lost my straw. But there you go, that's it. This is how you can make prints that look, uh, I use this because in real life these are okay. You can kind of read these, but on film they don't work so well. So for film, I oftentimes will, will use this process to make them stand out. Uh, a little bit better and like I said I'll probably do that on the red ones over here to make them stand out so here's where the video gets mangled and we'll cut it off there but I do want to take this opportunity to say that next Saturday morning that is the 15th at 9 a.m. Mountain Standard Time I will be doing a live stream where I will be answering your 3D printing questions. So if you have a 3D printer and you're having troubles and, and you're having problems, uh, send those to me or show up at the time. There will be a link where you can show up. It's probably only gonna take maybe a half an hour that morning. So you gotta be you know, on it. And hopefully I can get some other 3D printer uh, YouTubers there so that we can we can collaborate together on it if nobody shows up then it'll just be me answering questions that people have already asked me and that I've already responded to I'm always open to uh, uh, answering those questions so if you have anything go ahead and send it to me but if you can show up on uh, Saturday morning we'll have maybe a guest or two show up but otherwise safety first and I'll see you then